All right, I'll take any questions at this time. All right, uh, Mr. Joey Bag of Donuts, uh, Jacob Harrison here. Just uh, I heard some rumors that you might be uh, looking at doing a podcast for USC. Can you maybe clear up some of those rumors, uh, put them to bed, accept them for what they are? Hey, guys, I don't have time for that speculation. That's a joke to me. I've got one of the best jobs in all of professional podcasting. Why would I have any interest in podcasting about college football? And that'll be the last time I address it. And not only today, but moving forward. Never say never, but never. Okay? Anybody else got got any questions about any college podcasts? There's not a podcast host with a big enough blank check. Okay? Anybody ask Sean Payton about that? Anybody ask Joe Rogan about any college podcasts? And scene. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> okay. Not bad for one take. <laughs> Incredible. I loved it. <laughs> I rehearsed that all day. That was incredible. That oh crap. court has to ruin it that was incredible that that shaped up to be a really boring tomlin press conference and then he pulls that out and i was just waiting i was waiting for somebody to say to to bring up that question about usc and i knew he was he was going to be cranky about it but man he was that was that was he's he's usually not that fired up no uh so I, i my favorite thing about it of course is you know, as a journalist, as somebody in media, you know, you see everybody get bent out of shape or, you know, oh, that damn Pittsburgh media, they're always out trying to get somebody. Or Tim Benz. Right. Oh, he's getting killed right now. He is. And, you know, first of all, you know, Tim's doing his job. Uh, You know, somebody had to ask, and at least he had the decency to wait until after all the Steeler Browns questions were asked. You know, so all the real business was out of the way we all knew that tomlin was going to refute these uh you know 15 years ago nick saban pretty heavily refuted the idea of being the alabama head football coach uh (laughs) you know that said he didn't have 15 years of prior success with the dolphins to back up his claim that he wouldn't leave uh like tomlin does but tim was doing his job pittsburgh media wasn't the one out to get him whoever created these rumors at both LSU and USC and then perpetuated them on ESPN, which Ryan Clark took ownership of too. Those are the people that did that. It's, you know, the Pittsburgh media. I, I, I know, I know I blocked most of their radio hosts, <laughs> uh, on Twitter. So I get it. I do. I, you know, there, there's, there's some things that can be cleaned up there, but I think Tim was just doing his job. Man. I, I, I think yeah, I got up and out of shape, and- but. Yeah, people are really bad at Tim Benz. Like he's yeah. just, and he is like, like how how could you ask him that question? How how you should have worded it better? Like, there's no no, he worded it as well as you can. <laughs> he knew what was coming. There's and no good like, way to word it because it, it, of course, Mike's going to be mad about it. Right, right. How and of course he he's like, even if it's true, he's not going to say, oh yeah, yeah, I'm negotiating right now. Yeah, we're yeah, I'm I'm. I'm <laughs> I'm on my way out the door. Like, like, even if it was true, you're not going to, no, no coach is ever going to say, oh yeah, I'm at the door. Exactly. Especially, you know, not even halfway through the season. So, but I like to see that side of Tom and I like to see him get fired up like that and be annoyed and passionate. You know, he's right. He does have one of the best jobs in the world. Uh, I told, I told my buddies, you know, he could lose, have three losing seasons consecutively over the next three years after Ben retires, because it's a difficult transition to make and he'd still keep his job. He's got the best job security in the world. The Steelers have had the same head coach for what? 50 something years, 60 years. I mean, it's, that's insane. He's got job security out the wazoo. Why would you go to a college program that's been floundering or even when it's had success dipped right back down with LSU you know, and deal with these 19 to 22 year olds. You have to completely shift the way you think you have to deal with boosters. You have to deal with, 
with moms and dads. You got to deal with NIL now, the changing landscape of that. Uh, recruiting. Look, nobody gets paid enough to recruit. Nobody. <laughs> that that's that's a ridiculous task, and all of that on top of scheming for the next week. Why would he leave the Pittsburgh Steelers for that? <laughs> nobody would. It's very rare that a that a, that a professional coach goes to, to coach college. It's 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 yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't happen. It's like I don't care, <laughs> I don't care. Um, yeah. As he said, who has a blank check? Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much money you have. I mean, I, you know, another thing is look at Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer was a king in college football, and look how he's doing in the pros. Yeah, well. It, Look how long it's taken Jim Harbaugh to even find success at Michigan. I yeah. mean, you know, anybody could point to Nick Saban and be like, oh, well, that's an NFL guy that went to, to the college and got it done. Yeah. Name somebody else, please. Because there's, there's, I mean, Pete Carroll, maybe. He, he wasn't successful in the NFL, went to USC, was very successful, came back to the NFL, still found success. But so many things are predicated as far as being a coach on things that you really can't control. Look at look at Dabo Sweeney with Clemson right now. Mm-hmm. He had a ton of success over the past several seasons. With Trevor and, Lawrence. Right. And, and thought he'd Sean continue, Watson. Thought he'd continue it with DJ Uyangalale, who was a five star quarterback, uh, you know, number two player in the entire country behind Bryce Young, you know, quarterback for Alabama. Uh, you know, all of a sudden he's not good. So yeah. now Dabo, his entire job security is in question, right? A little bit, not not severely, but if the if it continued, it would be. Well, you know, if, so all those things are out of your hands in the NFL, especially with the Steelers. You know, you're you're more closely tied to the organization, and they understand what you're going through and understand. You know, okay, you know, our quarterback of 15 years just retired. We understand you're probably going to go through a little bit of a, a hiccup here. So, you know, he's going to have that leniency there to figure out and find a solution and, you know, usher in a new era of, of Steelers football. Why wouldn't he want to be a part of that? And we already know how he would be without that 15 year Hall of Fame quarterback, because in 2019, Ben got hurt. Mm-hmm. And not only did he have a not not even an average quarterback not even did he have a below average quarterback <laughs> mason and duck were he had a duck he had it they were ducks <laughs> yeah <laughs> and still they were eight and five at one point and almost yeah. made the playoffs with 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 those guys as quarterbacks imagine him with just you know someone else that's that's a little bit better please not jimmy garoppolo please 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 God, uh, Tomlin, if you're listening, please not, not, not Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm hoping that uh, Alex Kazor is onto something. I, I've seen him talk about it a couple of times over the past few days. Is that Tomlin is really fixated on mobile quarterbacks? Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope that may, doesn't lead to uh, to a guy like Tyrod Taylor, but uh, hopefully <laughs> it does lead poor, to poor. you know somebody that can move a little bit. <laughs> if Tyrod Taylor come, came here, he'd be hurt in the first game, just like he does every ever every other place he goes to. Oh yeah, poor guy. Poor guy. But yeah, I, I still would not want him. No, uh, not at all. Yeah, I, I'm. Um, yeah, I don't want Jimmy G. I don't. I don't. I don't know who's going to be out there. But Russ or or Aaron Rodgers. That's not happening. <laughs> That's not. Happening. Don't kill my dreams, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Apparently in Green Bay they call him Karen Rogers, which just cracks me up. I'll kiss his feet. Oh, <laughs> I, I got I ain't got bad nicknames for Aaron Rodgers. The funny thing is, come here, wear twelve. Let's go. I think Rogers <laughs> is like a year younger than Ben. It's not like yeah, it's like we're replacing a really old guy with another really old guy. But Aaron Rodgers is at the top of his game, and unfortunately yeah. Ben is not. Rogers looks. Uh... I, he looks a little bit, you know, older. You know, he's got he's got some some bags under the eyes, but he still looks more likely to play into his forties than Ben does to play at forty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ben Ben did not age well, and hey, I mean, <laughs> how many hits has he took? You know, you can't you can't blame him. Uh, but I mean, the, the big question is is 
is how's Ben going to hold up the rest of the season? Uh, you know, it's, we don't know. It's, you know, he's, he's already, he's already been hit a lot. So hopefully that offensive line improves. Well, if they continue on the track they're on, then a lot of things look very positive for this. Team. Right. Uh, right. You know, we've seen them take, you know, strides probably isn't the word, you know, they're probably just comfortably walking forward because uh, it's not quite baby steps either, but you know, the running game is improving. There is more time for Ben. Like we saw a little bit of it a couple of weeks ago where Ben was still getting the ball away really, really quickly. I think it was against Denver. Uh, and then you could kind of see as the game progressed, he's like, Oh, I actually have a little bit of time to read through a progression. Right. <laughs> I don't, I don't have to get right. into the first guy on the read uh, at the line of scrimmage. And then that kind of continued into uh, last week's game too. So, you know, I don't think that'll be the case against the Browns when, you know, we're going to have to temper expectations a little bit because the Browns, their defensive line is freakish. Uh, and I know they're banged up across the board, but miles Garrett is still miles Garrett, whether we like it or not. So, uh, you know, he, he's probably going to get banged up a little bit against the Browns. I don't have high expectations for this game at all, but, uh, you know, it well, might look a little ugly, but it's still a work in progress. It's not the end of the world if they fail. The question about the offensive line is actually who's going to be on it now because it looks yeah. like Zach Banner is back. So does he take Dan Moore's spot on left tackle? Does he take Chuke's spot at, at right tackle? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I know what you want. <laughs> yeah, don't take Dan Moore out of the game. Uh, do not take Dan Moore out of the game. Well, it, it, it's difficult, right? Because Chooks is playing better. Uh, ever since I, you know, called him Cheeks. He heard he's, he's, he, he I guess he heard you. me. I mean, he, he was, stepped it up. He was deeply hurt by what you said. Yeah, he's, he's played a little bit better, but I'm still not overly pleased with him. And Zach Banner did win the job outright. I really don't like doing this, but he did win the job outright two years ago and hasn't really had the opportunity to show, you know, that he's, he can be the right tackle for this team. So if, you know, this is one of those things where I put it in the trust of Mike Tomlin to make the decision that's best for the team. Uh, if, if that means Zach Banner should get the shot to go out there and, and do his thing and find, and have an opportunity to, you know, sink or swim, see what, see what the 380 pound does you know, does in the, in the deep end it, cause if he fails, it, it, it's probably not going to be any worse than Chuck's. And if it is, you just throw Chuck's back out there. Well, that's a, that's a thing. And, and, and he mentioned it in the, in the press conference, he's like, it's a good problem to have. Now yeah. you have some options. So if things don't go well, now you actually have someone you, you can replace. So cool. So let's, let's see what happens. Which is interesting because I don't think Joe Haig played bad when he was out yeah. there. So, yeah really and truly you've got three options it's just a matter of who are you willing to put the most trust in now that we're headed into the backside of the of the season and you know you can very quickly go from a playoff contender to having a top 10 pick and go yep. one or what one each way very very right. easily right. and this decision could impact that that outcome uh, very easily the the season is still very young so we'll, we'll see yeah. and like you said a minute ago you're going against the browns that's no easy task uh miles garrett is maybe the best defensive lineman in the league uh, uh depends on what you classify tj watt as <laughs> yeah he's te- okay he's technically a linebacker but you know he's on the defense line <laughs> hey hey put put tj watt miles garrett and aaron donald in a bag you're 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 gonna come up with a really good <laughs> uh, pass destroyer uh so yeah i mean they're they're gonna have to you know i don't know what they're gonna do to stop garrett but uh you know you, you can't stop him. you can only hope to slow him down <laughs> yeah basically basically so yeah we'll see um yeah i'm, I'm really interested to see how they do against the Browns. Uh, yeah, the Browns are banged up, but they're getting Nick Chubb back, and that sucks. Yeah. They're getting Chubb back. Uh, you know, Jedrick Wills is getting healthy, and and really and truly, it doesn't matter if Baker plays or not. 
because Case Keenum can run their offense. He's one of the best backups in the in the league. And the gap between him and Baker, while it is pretty deep, I think I think Baker is a lot better than people give him credit for. Uh, but Keenum still, you know, he's he's still a top forty quarterback in the NFL. Like a lot of people maybe lose sight of that just because he's a backup. Uh, but he looked good against Denver. I'd feel a hell of a lot better if I had him as my backup quarterback instead of Mason Rudolph or, <laughs> or Dwayne Haskins. Like it, it is what it is, right? And and we saw that you you said it against the Broncos. He was nothing but efficient. You know, I, their injuries could get in the way, but at the same time, they really they're just a very well coached football team. They have a lot of talent and they have a lot of depth, and that's why. You know, I was dumb enough and bold enough to predict that they'd go to the damn Super Bowl. You know, it is not baseless. It's because they have so much. They've accumulated so much, and they've got a great head coach for once. That was half their battle. You know, they they just needed a quarterback that could move the sticks, and they needed a head coach with a, with a brain in between his ears. And that's what they've got now. So, to me, it's not, you know – it's not terribly shocking that they're struggling early because I think their steam is going to pick up later uh, because of, you know, some of the youth and the fact they've grown so much in free agency, uh, but they're still really, really good. And and I don't anticipate Pittsburgh will win the game. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I think Case Keenan will play and I'm not that high. I'm not as high on Baker Mayfield, but, as hurt as he is, he's he's you know not even I don't even know if he's fifty percent of himself when he was playing. So, right. uh, you know, it'd be foolish yeah. to risk it. I mean, oh you, yeah, you got a fracture in your shoulder. Like, leave it alone. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're not gonna lose your job. You're still gonna dude. get paid. They're not moving on from you. Like, that's just that's just media talk, dude. You're the quarterback of the future. There, you're not playing so badly that they should move on. Or you know, it, it took them 20 years to find you. They're not leaving you, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so don't risk it. Like, that, that's just as a football fan. Don't risk it. Because all it takes one time is TJ Watt getting passed. And and him, you know, because Watt strips at the ball, which is going to strip at your arm. Like, you got that ball right here. Like, your left arm goes the way it's not supposed to. You're done for the season. And his team Super Bowl's opportunity is shot or they're forced to believe in case Keenum and move on from you because you were dumb enough to play. So no, as strictly as a football fan, not as somebody who's a fan of a rival team, don't be dumb enough to go out there and play. Hey, kudos to him for toughing it out. I mean, he's been yeah. in pain for, for a while now. So yeah, dude, we, okay. You, you've proved yourself. You're, you're, you're tough. You're yeah. You're, you, you know, you're, you're not losing your job. To case yeah. camp, so <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. But I mean, uh, but the, the, the thing that scares me is okay. Now that they have Chubb, now that they're getting a little bit more healthy, they're not, I don't, it doesn't matter who, who the uh, quarterback is. Yeah. I mean that that the Ernest Johnson kid played yeah. out of his mind, so he fits in for Kareem Hunt easy. Like he's he's it's one of those situations where if you have a really good offensive line, it doesn't really matter who your yeah. running back is. You're 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 going to run the ball, and the way that the Steelers were so bad at defending the run against Seattle, it's scary. Yeah, I hope that was a situation. I think uh, maybe it was Chris Wormley said that they just weren't prepared for Seattle to to go that direction. And I don't know why you wouldn't be. Geno Smith's their frigging quarterback, and Alex Collins has lit you up before when he was wearing purple and black. But, you know. Uh, well, they were up two scores. So right, it's yeah. like, well, the conventional wisdom is, well, if we're up two scores in the second half, we're going to expect them to throw. Right. So it's like but at that. the same time. 30 minutes is a lot of football. You can stick to your game plan and come back from two scores. Uh, and you're, you're talking about a team that loves to run. So yeah, exactly. Like, and you know what, you know, the first few times, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're <laughs> Alex Collins is just running wild on you. Maybe start to adjust. Don't wait so long. It's like, yeah, it's like that, that, that one meme with, uh, 
uh, Anakin Skywalker and Padme. It's like, you're going to stop running, right? Right. <laughs> you're going to stop running, right? <laughs> and he just, he just looks at him. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I really wish the Steelers would get healthier on the defensive line. Um, no offense. It'd be to great Worm. if Stefan Tuick could come back. It would be, it would be amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, losing um, Tyson Alulu just really, that was a really underrated uh, player, and that's a that was a that was a big loss. So um, Cam Hayward is having you know the season of his career, yeah. and all right, Isaiah Bugs, all right, all right, Mondo, all right, Wormley, let's let's do something because mm. it's a little it's a little scary. Um, another. Person. I don't see a Brett Kiesel in that group. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I don't, the problem. I don't see a guy that that has no business being good. That was a seventh round pick. That's that's just going to all of a sudden be right. Cam Hayward's right hand man. I, I don't right. see that guy. All right, come on, come on, Louder Milk or whatever. Come on, <laughs> Louder Milk's you know. played well. I, he's I was... all right. He's he's just a rookie. And, oh yeah, you know, we'll but see. I mean, but... as far as expectations for him. Uh, because I, you know, social media burned down in, in Steelers verse, you know, because you know, that guy might not have been drafted in the seventh round. And it's like the Steelers liked him, he's got good size, he's comparable, or you know, to, to certain guys, but he's played well. I think it, 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 he's not ready to be like a replacement for Tuit or even make you feel good that Tuit's out and he's playing. But I like, I like his upside more than I do Mondu or, or warmly sure as hell more than bugs. Yeah. Well tied. Yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> bugs bugs. is if, if you were the rank of the, uh, the Steelers from Alabama, he bugs would be last on that on, on, on any list <laughs> behind, behind uh, JC. Well behind JC. Austin. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, that hasn't um, been good, man. The other he played other, just well enough in the preseason to keep his job. It was just yeah, yeah. Uh, the other person I guess should step up is Devin Bush. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I you know I hear well, he's actually not that bad, but still, that's that's a yeah. crappy it's a crappy argument. This is something I've talked about a lot with with you know on my show covering Alabama football is. You know, because we're having its off-ball linebacker issues here too. I know everybody thinks we're perfect. We have problems. Uh, <laughs> our off-ball linebackers like avoid guards, right? They run away from them. They avoid shedding blocks because they're small. They're athletic. Uh, they don't necessarily make a lot of plays within three yards of the line of scrimmage. Devin Bush kind of plays the same way, but he's got an excuse. He's still within that time frame of coming back from an ACL injury. Right. So I understand kind of the trepidation that he might be playing with. Uh, that being said, it's not like he got a lot of tackles for loss at Michigan either. You know, that was something that, you know, some of us maybe overlooked a little bit too much. Uh, he's never been, he's not Lawrence Timmons, you know, like he's not going to plug the a gap and instill fear on the running backs. What he's going to do is run around and make plays. He's a sideline to sideline linebacker. In he'll a get you in the sense. backfield. He'll 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 get you there because he's going to use his speed to get you. But right. but if it's up to him to to stop somebody that's already you know busted through the line, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, and and that's the problem where with the evolutions in linebackers right now is you can't have the best of both worlds. There's no way to just merge Robert Spillane and Devin Bush together so that you got a guy that can meet Derrick Henry in a hole in the hole, but you also got a guy that you feel confident in a hook zone. You know, yeah. it, it's just, it's very hard to find those guys right now because those guys are Fred Warner. They're Bobby Wagner. You know, they're the best linebackers in the NFL and the Steelers just don't have that right now. It, but I will say this for Devin Bush, I understand it. So, you know, this is basically his second year in the league. And his first year, we saw a lot of exciting plays that we're not seeing right now, but there wasn't an ACL injury on, in front of exactly. that. So I'll, I'll hold off true criticism for him until we're, you know, maybe at this point next season. 
Uh, yeah. But at that point, it's it's starting to play for contract and for fifth year option kind of stuff. So you really do have to step up at that point and show that you can be a Pittsburgh Steeler linebacker, not just a, a run of the mill guy that plays in the NFL at linebacker that just because he's manageable in coverage. If he doesn't get better, if he turns out to be a bust, that's a major uh, hole for the for the Steelers considering what they had the trade up to a top 10 pick to get him and for that to not to work out ooh that'd be bad well it 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 feel a little bit better because Joe Schobert is yeah that dude's a Pittsburgh Steeler you know and it, the thing is he's a 7 or 8 year veteran you know so it's a right. little bit more okay well if things do go south with Bush we do at least have this guy to lean on and we can continue to build in the draft and maybe, you know, maybe Johnson or somebody will step up and they'll be the, the solution. But, you know, the best of both or, or, or the best situation, of course, would be Bush to pan out and be a guy that plays like a top 10 pick because the guy that was picked a couple of picks later, Devin White, he's considered one of the best in the league. And that'll right. sting a little bit if, if you got the wrong Devin. Right. Right. Yeah. And then uh about minka I, I i like that he was that someone asked tomlin about him and <laughs> tom was like i am not worried at all just wait D- don't worry don't worry about him not 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 one ounce of worry about minka which is hey th- then i'm not worried right that you know sometimes you just got to listen to the head coach and go with the flow uh, I remember last year when a lot of folks were really bent out of shape about Minka and they were like, Oh, he's not making plays. He's not doing this, he's not doing that. And then if you compare his stats from his first 14 games with Pittsburgh and then his second season with Pittsburgh, they're like identical. Like he gave up like maybe two or 3% more passes had one less pick, but they were, I mean, they were close. They were really close. Now this year he doesn't have the numbers and, and, you know, I see everybody's like, Oh, he doesn't have any splash plays. He's I've, I've seen him miss tackles in the open field. He's a free safety, man. It's not his job. Like it, technically, right. I mean, if it's deep down the field, it's his job, but you know, coming up, you know, within eight yards of the line of scrimmage, it's not his job, but you can't tell me through what seven games that, you know, him being targeted 21 times in those seven games, that that's enough opportunity to make some sort of splash play. Uh, Last I checked all of the fate, all the rules in the NFL favor the offense. So it's not like it's super easy for him to make these kind of plays. It's not like it, all that to say too, he's one of the most feared and respected defensive backs in the NFL too. It's not like they're going to like force their hand at him. They're avoiding him for good reason. He takes the ball away. Like you don't want to have to call his name. He's this is the problem with Troy Polamalu is they is that he played safety, but he did everything and he played the Troy Polamalu position. He was, he was a freak. And that's exactly. what we were. That's what we we're having. It was like, oh, we want another Troy. We want we want the guy and, that, that, that jumps <laughs> on the line of scrimmage and, and leaps over the entire team and, and grabs the quarterback and stuff. It's like no, Troy was Troy was a freak. And what we tr- got was a very poor man's Ed Reed. He's a free safety. He mans the middle of the field. Does he do all the things that Ed Reed did to make him the greatest free safety of all time? Who, you know, I, I had a friend tell me the other day that Ed Reed once did something incorrect in a coverage for weeks just so that he could fool Peyton Manning to pick him off. Make it Fitzpatrick. Don't do that. Right. But so, you know, sometimes you got to live with just having a great player. I mean, sometimes they're not going to be ridiculously elite for 15 years. Sometimes you just got to be happy with a great player. We are happy with guys like Lawrence Timmons. We're happy with guys like Stefan to who are just great players you know, they're, they're nothing really special. Why can't we be the same way with Minka Fitzpatrick? But, Just because we gave know, up a first rounder? If you have a really good cornerback or a really good safety, the other team's not going to throw at that player. Right. So 
you can't say, well, he's not doing anything. He's he's his presence means that he, he's not going to get thrown at. And he did make some splash splash plays, but they got called back on on play and on penalties and stuff. So, like I said, <laughs> you can't Tomlin, please everybody. <laughs> Tomlin got mad about one thing at his press conference. He was not mad about about Minka at all. He's like. Not he he just did not have a care in the world. I think that how... guy might knows what he's talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe maybe Minka could be the defensive backs coach at USC when when Tomlin goes there. Uh... <laughs> uh, another thing I want to see is if there, we're still going to get more Ray Ray than James Washington. That's, That's odd. Weird. No, no offense to Ray Ray, but you're. Come on, I'd rather see James Washington out there. I mean, it's different skill sets, so I guess it depends on what they're trying to do. Yeah. And Matt Canada tends to lean towards the kind of things that Ray Ray does. But, I mean, I want James Washington out there because out, out, of, out of the guys that we got, you know, the guy that's going to lower his shoulder and pick up a first down, it's James Washington. Like, it's not the six foot four, 230-pound Chase Claypool. <laughs> like, I love sure. the guy, oh. but, but that ain't him. It's oh. just not. Uh, and, and Deontay Johnson, I've seen him run backwards too many times to count. Uh, but I know that that's, that's, you know, that's, that's Farmer James. You know, James is going to lower his shoulder. He's going to ball over you uh, or he's going to die trying, you know. And so I want to see that out of him. Those short crossing routes, they're just as effective for him as they are for Juju. He may have a slighter frame. And he may have a reputation for winning those 50-50 balls, but he's still – he's a football player, man. So give him those opportunities. I feel a little bit more comfortable with him. Yeah, he's hes just not <laughs> – hashtag free James Washington. Like, like he's just not getting <laughs> – I mean, the, he, this is just, why you don't trade uh, James. Well, <laughs> not using yeah, him. Yeah, <laughs> but, 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 if, but if I'm him, I'm like, you know, and I see – Juju go down. It's like, okay, now's my shot. It's like, wait, that that Ray Ray is playing ahead of me. I'm right. not, I'm, I wouldn't be happy about that, but we'll see. And the weird thing is, this is a must win game. There, the, the AFC North is stacked. Now the Bengals are good. This, what is this? The cats and dogs living together? Oh my goodness. Will they, the, will the real Jamar Chase please stand up? because we have all been hoodwinked bamboozled and led astray the the jamar chase of the preseason please come back (laughs) because we can't handle what is is this well i I don't know what what am i supposed to am i I supposed to catch (laughs) i mean look i love watching great players i really do i just wish they weren't always in the afc north you know that's all (laughs) unless they wear black and gold you know don't wear the other you know don't wear black and orange or black and purple or no i mean the Bengals they're they're fun to watch for real because they run the football well with joe mixon joe burrow is getting time to throw miraculously somehow when they didn't address the offensive line at all their defense is pretty good their defense is good Uh, god it's frustrating, man, because you thought that there would at least be that little bit of leeway, right? Like when we talked, uh, you know, going down the schedule, and I was like, yeah, I think we'll get swept by the Browns and the Ravens, but we'll split with the Bengals. Well, now I don't feel confident that we're going to win that next game with the Bengals because they're legit. They're mm-hmm. really, really good, and and it really, really sucks. <laughs> I still think yeah, – I don't know. I don't know now. I mean, they, they, they might have become too powerful. Uh, I don't count – when they beat the Steelers because that was without uh, TJ Watt. And I think mm-hmm. there was a bunch of under, other injuries. I mean, basically that was not the Steelers that, 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 uh, that the Bengals beat. That was just, you know, Burrow had all the time in the world and that's just not, not the Steelers defense. Oh, so, yeah. uh, but still, wow. I mean, to go into Baltimore and just whoop <laughs> and, and they, and, they were a good field goal kicker away from beating Green Bay. Yeah. They're good. <laughs> they're good. <laughs> they're good. No, like they're not gonna they're be good. like stumbling into the playoffs. They're gonna be like a, a you know a five seed. It's but, like 
I mean, they could damn well I, win the division. I, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I know it's early, but right now I think they're the one seed or some crap, some crazy crap like yeah, that. Yeah, I um, mean, but still, we'll the see. The Chiefs we'll see will figure happens. it out. The Ravens will figure it out. The Titans are figuring it out. So I, I, I don't know I, if the know. Chiefs are going to figure it out. I think they will. I hope they will. I don't know. <laughs> They might have a lot of problems. I don't know. This is, hmm. We'll see. We'll I see. If, I mean, I wonder if Mahomes is just like in his head a little bit, like, oh, I can do that. And it's like defenders have figured out that split second of when he thinks he can do something. And that's, that's the difference. But well, he's good he's, enough to figure it out. He, every play, he's trying to score that 40 point touchdown and, and, and trying to, you know, just, just win the entire game on every play and put the entire team on his back. And it's like, dude, that's, that's... you got to go Mac Jones. You can't go broke, taking a profit, dump it down for three yards, man. Yeah. Take your shots when they come. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, that I don't know what the draft history of the, of the chiefs is, but I don't, I don't think it's good. And it's finally catching up to them when you have a, quarterback on <laughs> the largest co- contract ever created you know yeah. that 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 does not help so um i did see something that said imagine if instead of drafting clyde edwards hilaire they drafted jonathan taylor that would be scary that would be yeah because then when Mahomes is bad you actually have somebody to turn around and give the ball exactly. to i mean good lord the that, best quarterback yeah. with the best uh, running back with an awesome wide receiver and an awesome tight end. Yeah. You, you're not stopping that. And, but Hey, I mean, Hey, at the time when they drafted Hilaire, everybody's like, Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I made that's a ton awesome. of sense. great pick. Great pick. So, Hey, hindsight's 2020. Well, they don't, I don't think they utilize them like that because like you said, they're pushing the ball downfield so much that they're not taking what's underneath. They need to, they need to utilize that. Uh, Zach hurts. Ha. Ah, Travis Kelsey. That tight end. They need to use uh, Travis Kelsey underneath more often. They need to use Clyde Edwards Hilaire underneath more ops uh, more often, just to get the defense to be honest and to respect what they do. Because man, while it's really fun for you to throw it seventy yards down the field to Tyreek Hill and for him to throw up the deuces, it's not reasonable and it's not feasible. And that's why these teams with great pass rushers are getting after you and making it look easy. Listen, Bud Dupree didn't have a sack going into that game against Kansas city. He's got one now. I yeah. think <laughs> you're making it too easy on these guys. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's almost like maybe, yeah, slow it down and maybe have like a long drive. Cause I mean, your defense sucks. So maybe yeah. just, just, you know, the best defense is a good offense and just, just, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I figured they would figure it out by now, but or or their defense would get better, but it hasn't happened. So I don't know. Uh, but but I mean, I I think um, I think the Bills are the best in the AFC. I yeah. think that they're they're the number one team now. Now now the Chiefs are blah. And I mean, who knows? I mean, it's it's just it's just crazy. who knows what's what's going on with the Ravens. What's funny though is the Bills are kind of getting it done the same way that the Chiefs used to, I, or and are trying to. They just launch the ball down the field all the time. They don't really have a great running game, but they've got Emmanuel Sanders deep down the field. They've got Stefan Diggs deep down the field. Uh, They got Cole Beasley deep down the field. And, and, and Josh Allen's is just a flick of the wrist and it's gone. They're just, just, yeah. Yeah. Their defense is incredible. And you know, what was, what was the criticism of the, of the Steelers last year? There's no running game. Well, Bills don't have a running game and they seem to be okay. Yeah, trust me. I have Zach Moss on my fantasy lineup. I don't get Jack Ooh, from. Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be real interesting. Basically, the the Steelers are just going to have to. Uh, the, 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 there's not a lot of room for error when you got possibly every single team in in your division is really good. So we're used to being one of those teams. We're used to being the Ravens and the Steelers and the Bengals are really good. And the Browns are really bad. And, you know, we just go on business as usual. We're not used to being last. (laughs) It don't feel good. Why can't we be in the AFC East? 
with the Dolphins and the Jets. <laughs> oh, 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 it's, the it's, Jets. it's, an, it's an easy four wins right there. <laughs> I mean, the Jets looked so good a couple of weeks ago. They got their first win and it just came crashing back down to earth. Everybody gets hurt. And it's like, there you go, Robert Sala. That's what it's really like to wear green. <laughs> Why is it? Why is it that the bad teams are always bad and the good teams are almost always good? Because it starts from the top and it works its way down. Exactly. It, it, yeah. It's, it's, I don't care how many number one picks you give the Jaguars, they're going to suck. I don't care how many number one picks you give the, uh, the Jets, they're always going to suck. Like, <sighs> well, I mean, look at the, the Browns. I mean, it took a couple of changes in ownership before it, you know, went the way it did and they finally hired a a good head coach so Stefanski deserves coach he needs a statue he already deserves a statue in Cleveland I don't care (laughs) when his contract is up you sign him to a you sign him give all the money you were going to give the Baker Mayfield give it to Stefanski because he's the one that deserves it yeah give him a Patrick Mahomes deal yeah, when you go in for him to erase a culture of losing that has been going on for decades and to reverse that and to change that, that's like that's like that's like 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 taking over like a South American country or something like that and turning it around. I mean, that's 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 a and, miracle they'd write in the Bible, dude. Like that's exactly. that's hard. <laughs> It's like um, it's like in baseball with the Pirates. They they, they you know about uh, five years ago they 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 turned it around for 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 a little while and they turned it around and they were making the playoffs. That's a miracle. It's no yeah. big deal when the Steelers make the playoffs, but if the Browns or, or the Jets make the playoffs, it's you know, it's you know time to time to get cover because there's going to be locusts and 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 frogs <laughs> and all kinds of biblical signs. Yeah, so. <laughs> Yeah, all, all credit to Stefanski. Stefanski's so yeah. good, he beat the Steelers in the playoffs. He wasn't even there. <laughs> he's like, Ow. He's like, yeah. <laughs> that one I did like <laughs> I did like that. Um, I guess uh, they talked to Ebron and he's like, he's like, we don't need motivation to beat them. They kick their ass in the playoffs. We don't we don't right. we we remember that. So um NFL guys, they're self-motivated. <laughs> they gotta mm-hmm. be sort of they also have they also get they get extra motivation too a little bit they say they don't a little bit (laughs) all right man sorry andrew sorry i don't know what i don't know what happened but uh we still we still carried on (laughs) it's still fun (laughs) yep all right hey thanks thanks for coming on absolutely take it easy all right see you